Senator Ludlam. Uh, thank you, Madam Acting Deputy President. <clears throat> and I rise to add some comments um, from a similar part of the world, but further south from uh, where uh, Senator Smith has just um, been speaking of. And this is an issue that I also know our uh, Acting Deputy President has quite close to her heart, which is the city of Geraldton. It was an event that uh, both of us attended at the CUSP Centre in Fremantle a matter of a few weeks ago for the launch of a document produced by the community of Geraldton that um, caught me by surprise somewhat, I suppose, not really knowing what to expect. It's titled Geraldton from Local to Global Regional City, and it's an extraordinarily visionary document. It's come out of a series of workshops, uh, of deliberative workshops that were held um, by Jeanette Hartz Karp, who some uh, senators in this place might be familiar with, whose specialty really is, uh, is democratic decision making around what kind of communities we want to live in, rather than top down um, democracy. This is bottom up deliberative democracy, and it works exceptionally well if it's given a chance. Now, in Geraldton, they've given this a try, and uh, one of the outputs of that process is this document from local to global regional city based around the concept of, of how they want this city to look in the year 2029, which would be 400 years since the Dutch were bumping into the coast. It's also, interestingly, will be 200 years since the establishment uh, of the Swan River colony further to the south. It's been put into gorgeous visual language by uh, David Galloway and Sarah Andrews. And that, at that launch, we heard uh, from the mayor, Ian Carpenter, who deserves congratulations for his leadership in this project. And uh, the, the quite dynamic CEO, Tony Brun, who have come up with a quite ambitious vision for Geraldton's future. Now, this is a city for senators not from Western Australia, about 430 kilometres to the north of Perth in the Midwest region. Uh, it's historically, it's um, uh, been the economy up there has been based on agriculture and the pastoral industry. Uh, a lot of interest at the moment in uh, iron ore deposits, not too far from the city of Geraldton. And the community doesn't want to just be a quarry. So they're interested in the expansion of their town, they're interested in its development, but they don't want to be left, as some other Western Australian communities have, as a, as a, a fly in fly out centre with services hollowed out, with housing completely unaffordable, and with the economy dangerously unbalanced. So they've taken um, the initiative and produced this document, and I was there. I congratulate uh, Minister Simon Crean for being at the launch and for giving the uh, community a boost, and uh, uh, that, I think, takes this document to the next step. It's come from the community, but it's been endorsed, obviously, by the federal government uh, and also, I think, by the state government. The leader of the nationals in uh, Western Australia has also made a contribution to this document. They're looking for an economically adaptive city, changing and diversifying the economic base. So initial opportunities, obviously, still coming from agriculture, fisheries and mining. But to become a regional logistics and freight hub, they will be the first regional centre to have every household con connected to the NBN. So even if there is a change of government next year uh, and the opposition decide to just simply flatten the proposal, Geraldton at least will get through the net. And I think uh, they, the uh, coalition would then have probably some difficulties explaining to neighbouring communities why they don't get um, the system. But Geraldton will be through. They are also looking to the Square Kilometre Array project, that portion of that, uh, which will offer a completely different kind of economic opportunities to the region. And being selected as one of 33 cities worldwide to receive an IBM Smarter Cities Challenge, which, is, which uh, really, I think, takes local aspirations and gives them something of a global boost. They're proposing to be a carbon neutral city and they are not just fiddling around at the edges, but the, this is a region, as was explained to us, that has uh, all of the major renewable energy resources, you could say with the exception of hydro, including wind, solar, geothermal power, biomass power, and an amazing wave resource. And they're not sitting on their hands. They are proposing to make this the world's first carbon neutral heavy industry city. So as the mining industry expands, um, as most people believe it will. They are proposing to take not just the increased demand on the grid, but existing demand, and put large-scale solar plants in there. There's already a 10 megawatt solar farm going in, which will be, I think, the largest, certainly the largest in the state, if not in the country. Um, 
but also to roll out with local developers uh, and, and other commercial interests renewable energy technology across all the portfolios to make this a renewable city. It's an extraordinary effort that they're taking, and it was quite something as a Greens MP to come to the launch and realise that this is a community initiative. This is not something that we've been um, banging on about. It's, it's arising from the community itself. I hope that the local member, Barry Hass, who was also uh, present at an event that I spoke at, at that night, will convince his leader not to pull the plug out from under this community if he gets the chance. If there is a change of government next year, not only will they be ripping the MBN out of regional communities that thought they would be getting it, but all the work that has been done on the Clean Energy Act and on creating the resources to enable the kind of vision that's coming forward from the city of Greater Geraldton to become a reality will evaporate, will disappear, and we will not let that happen. We want to help Geraldton uh, realise this vision that's been put forward and then endorsed by the town's leaders and brought to state and national prominence. Um, I mentioned um, the, one of the reasons for the trip, um, or my invitation to get up there, um, uh, and then to hear firsthand from some of the people who've put these proposals together, uh, was an invitation by Andrew Althwaite and Kate Najjar from Pollinators Incorporated, which is a, an extremely innovative and quite rapidly growing uh, group of social entrepreneurs based in Geraldton. And they, I think, are helping catalyse some of the really interesting things that are going on up there. It's Australia's only member-based organisation dedicated to supporting social entrepreneurs. So it provides a structure for members to cooperate and access the support needed to realise their dreams, their projects, um, their aspirations for their community. And it operates Australia's first regional social enterprise co-working and innovation space called City Hive on the new marina waterfront in Geraldton. So they'd organised quite an engaging public event, uh, which I was fortunate to be able to attend, titled Myth Busting Politics and People Power. Uh, which is where I um, was able to hear the, the uh, member for Durac speak as well. It attracted a full house on a Friday night. We had an extremely lively and interesting discussion about uh, how our political system is broken, in their view, how it is not providing for what people want. And uh, it wasn't a whinging session, in fact, quite the reverse. There are a lot of proposals and propositions put forward for how we can, or how people in the local community and in regional cities like Geraldton. Um, can use this place, can use their representation in this place, uh, in some senses, to simply get out of the way and let them do what it is that they're trying to do. <clears throat> uh, I mentioned uh, fellow panellist Professor Jeanette hartz Karp, who works uh, globally, but probably locally in Western Australia, best known for the dialogue with the city uh, process that she ran with the former Planning and Infrastructure Minister, Alana McTiernan, which took, on a, on a larger scale, for the city of Perth, <clears throat> people's feedback from uh, across a range of different viewpoints and ran a deliberative process that came out with a planning policy that was actually quite visionary for the time it was put forward. And we're still getting some of the benefits of that. Um, and she, I think, gives some, some teeth to one of the Greens four pillars, that of participatory democracy, around the concept that a democracy is not just a piece of paper that you put in a box once every three or four years, that it's about taking these issues into your own hands. And that in some cases, we in this place and in state assemblies around the country are seen as the block and not the enabler. And that needs to change. Um, so I congratulate that pollinators group for, um, for their vision and their reach into the community and the projects that they're running, uh, including um, an event that I was able to speak at um, the following morning, uh, the, uh, the Catalyst project that they're running with a, a number of local people, local leaders, um, to which I was very fortunate uh, to be able to meet. My first stop in Geraldton was to launch the Bike Black Spot iPhone application, um, which I, I may have spoken of in this chamber before, but I would encourage all senators with an iPhone, wherever you live, because this application is national now, uh, to go to bikeblackspot.org and help our planning minister, Albanese, because uh, I know cycling is a passion of his, but we haven't been able to get a national cycling fund off the ground yet. Uh, and you will be able to, um, either from the web or from your smartphone, photograph your bike black spot, and it, it uh, takes it to a Google map and sends an email and your photograph and your note about the lack of cycling infrastructure or else something that you think is good to a website. Geraldton's the first regional city that we launched that in, and I was pleased to be able to make that contribution uh, because this is a community that cares a great deal about public transport, regional rail infrastructure, and of course cycling. 
and it's a perfect place for it as a city that's flat and has great weather. So I look forward to working more with some of the community leaders in Geraldton uh, and helping them support the amazing example that they're setting for the rest of the country.